here we go. It's my turn. Okay, go ahead and push it in. Oh, you did it! It's right there. Wow, that's cool. Hey guys, I'm David LaPointe. In this video, I will be showing you how to construct an over-unity device based on Primerfield magnetic arrays. Although I am confident that this device will indeed produce energy, I do not see this as the solution to our future energy needs. In my opinion, our future energy needs will be met by controlled fusion as the energy density will be far greater with fusion versus non-fusion solutions. This video will lay some necessary groundwork for my next video which will show in detail a controlled fusion device that was shown to me in a vision. Once again, I have no problem with anyone being skeptical of my claims to receiving visions, as I also would be skeptical if someone made such claims. I would have preferred to test this new fusion design before I made a video about it, but I am told I must show you what I am planning before I build it. As I mentioned before, this is not something that I am entirely comfortable with, but it is what is required of me at this time. For now, let's get back to how to build an over-unity device that is not fusion-based. The core of science is providing your evidence so that others can replicate your experiments and findings. Therefore, I will be showing you how to duplicate this over-unity device and I will hide nothing so that anyone who desires can replicate the experiments shown in this video. The files needed to duplicate this magnetic array can be found on the website primercube.org. Once you are there, go to the Primercube menu, then click on Technology Transfer. On the Technology Transfer page, scroll down to the section where the files for the bowl-shaped arrays are provided. You can then use a rapid prototyping machine or send the files to a rapid prototyping service to have the bowls made for you. For the primer cubes, we used a 5-axis CNC mill to precisely drill the holes for the magnets in the arrays. But for this over unity device, this high precision is not required. Once again, the magnetic arrays used in this over unity device are exactly the same as the magnetic arrays used in the primer cube. On our website, you will also find the complete specifications for the magnets used in the Primer Cube. These are the same magnets we will be using in the Over Unity device presented in this video. We will also be using the same magnets that are used in the Primer Cube to shoot through our Over Unity device to generate electricity. As you can see, the magnets in the orientation shown are repelled by the magnetic array from both sides. It was discovered that the optimal number of magnets to shoot through this over unity device was 7. Using any other number of magnets for this purpose resulted in less electricity being generated or the magnets would not shoot all the way through the magnetic arrays. In other words, they would get stuck. Here you can see the amount of force required to get the seven magnets to shoot through the bowl-shaped magnetic array. One direction shoots the magnets higher, 
but that direction also requires significantly more force to initiate this action. Here we see the basic setup to begin our testing, including a 400 turn coil of copper wire that will be used to capture the energy from the moving magnets. We will be using clear tubing that is 10 millimeter ID and 14 millimeter OD. Now we place two pieces of tape so that there is 46 millimeters between them. For this test, I use insulated copper wire with a diameter of 20 thousandths, which is about half a millimeter. The wire I use is the type that is used to wind electric motors. For these tests, I made coils with 400 turns each. You could increase the number of turns in these coils and thereby increase the voltage produced when the magnets shoot through them. But the higher the number of turns in the coils, the more they will slow down the magnets shooting through them. Therefore, the optimal number of turns in the coils needs to be arrived at by continued testing. If you try and capture too much energy with each coil, the magnets shooting through the coil may slow down so much that they will not make it through the next magnetic array. In other words, they will stop. There are many variables that can be changed that may increase the amount of energy produced by this device. This includes optimizing the spacing of the bowl-shaped magnetic arrays, optimizing the number of turns in the coils, increasing the strength of the magnets used in the bowl-shaped arrays, as well as the magnets used to shoot through the tube. Seven magnets, three eighths diameter. So here we see that waveform. So it goes up and it peaks up to 2.44 volts here. And it swings down here to negative 2.36 volts. So we have a differential voltage of 4.8 volts. It was not quite enough to light up the LEDs. Increased a little bit and the LEDs lit up very, very slightly there. Set to capture the pulse. And we can see the LEDs lit very slightly there. So now let's adjust our cursor lines. It's closer. Yet again. So we can see the LEDs went up, lit up, and our voltage went up here. So let's move this up. So now we can see that this voltage peak here coming in went up to 3.52 uh, volts here. It swung up to 3.52 volts by putting the bowl closer. Okay. There we go. So we can see that we, we put it right up on it, the voltage actually went down. So we're going to watch for the LEDs lighting up up here. We have this distance here and let's 
slight increase here. You can see that went up significantly. This incoming. Move it a little closer. Uh, kind of smoothed it out. We went up a little bit more. 6.16. Now we move the bowl-shaped magnetic array right up next to the coil. Here we will discover something very important which confirms something I was shown about the design of the fusion device that was revealed to me in a vision. When the bowl is right up next to the coil, the output voltage goes down significantly. So when your magnetic field, or magnets in this case, are moving in the direction shown here, you do not want the coil to be right up against the bowl-shaped magnetic array. It appears that the bowl-shaped magnetic arrays interfere with the amount of energy captured when you shoot the magnets through them in the direction shown here. In repeated testing, it also appeared that the magnets shooting through the rays in this direction are slowing down and would eventually stop if you increase the number of bowls used. But when we reverse the direction of the bowl-shaped arrays and shoot the magnets through them, the speed of the magnets appears to be increasing with each bowl they pass through. This is very logical if we look back on the test we ran earlier. With the bowl array in the direction shown on the right, 1064 grams of force is required to get the seven magnets to shoot through the array. But with the bowl array in the direction shown on the left, only 362 grams of force is required to shoot the magnets through the array. So you can see significantly better uh, going in this direction. Significantly better. I found the optimal spacing of the magnetic bowls to be 60 millimeters. If you increase this spacing, the magnets shooting through the bowls will stop. As you can see, the tubing can be curved significantly without affecting the voltage produced by the coils. Obviously, this means that you could make a closed-loop circle which would allow the magnets shooting through the bowls to keep going and going. Then as shown here, you could also add more magnets into this loop, thereby generating even more electricity. In this animation, you can see such an arrangement. This design would also require spacers between the groups of moving magnets, otherwise they would end up stuck together. Of course, you could also stack these closed loops on top of each other. Obviously, with enough of these loops, you could generate enough electricity to power a home. But once again, I do not see this as the real answer to our future energy needs. Therefore, from here on, all my research will focus on a fusion-based answer. 
In my next video, I will supply all the details of a design for a fusion-based device that was given to me in a vision. As I mentioned previously, I have not been allowed to test this design yet. So we will all be finding out together if the vision I was given will actually work. I do not have any doubts about the fusion aspect of this design. In fact, I believe I have already shown you fusion. The flip ring glows. We have clear evidence of transmutation and the hydrogen gas changes over time. I have obtained the equipment required to document this change in the hydrogen in my vacuum chamber. If, in fact, some of the hydrogen gas becomes helium, then this will confirm we have indeed achieved fusion. The bigger question for me is, can the energy produced by the fusion reaction be captured without any moving parts, as I was shown? I believe it can, but now I have to prove it, not just to you, but to myself as well. Then finally, we will find out if the fusion-based design I was given can actually produce more energy than what is required to operate it. In other words, will this device finally pass the fusion break-even point? If this fusion-based concept does that, it will totally change our future. For more information on all I am working on, go to my website at primercube.org, and at the bottom of any page, you can subscribe to my newsletter. In this newsletter, I will supply information that I will not be covering elsewhere. I have a lot more to tell you that I have kept quiet about for way too long.